to my channel. It's Emma. We have another weekly reading vlog. Um, today's Monday and I'm starting this right after I just finished filming um, my review video for Snow Country. I'm really, really happy that I'm finally done filming that and that it's done. And I got up early this morning, got ready and did it because I've just been meaning to just film it for so long. So I'm really happy that I got that done. And now I'm going to spend my kind of mid afternoon because it's around noon, it's currently 12.30. Um, I'm just gonna spend it reading, I think, or listening to my audiobooks mostly. And then I wanna go for a walk today. Um, I wanna film an ASMR video today because yeah, there's just so many videos that, um, and video ideas I have that I wanna do because I'm feeling quite inspired. So yeah, but let's start off the week with what I'm reading. So unfortunately, I think I'm gonna DNF um, Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia just because I'm not enjoying it. I got 50% through and it just always irks me when I don't finish a book because I feel, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I think it's a number of things, but I'm just not enjoying it. I know I probably give it a kind of low rating and I think what I've come to realize about how I feel about Silvia Moreno Garcia's works is that I'm I don't think her writing is very good. I don't think her plotting is very good, um, but I think she has amazing ideas. So for example, in Mexican Gothic, I loved it. I gave it four stars simply because of like the ideas and like the different elements and the different little things that actually happen in the book, but the whole writing, the characters, the dialogue, um, that just all falls completely flat and I'm finding I feel the same way about Gods of Jade and Shadow so unfortunately I think I'm just gonna put it aside because I don't really care what happens, I'm not invested in it um, and the writing is very hard to deal with. It's also a super simplistic, very linear storyline and there's just not a lot to it so yeah, that is that one. Yeah. Hey, quick papers. I'm gonna read more of this today. I've been, I had a little like kind of not super loving it moment, but now I'm back into loving it because we've had some really cool things going on. Um, we just had like a Christmas carol part in it, which was so interesting to see. I was listening to that part yesterday and I'm just really, really loving it. So another goal today is to film a little bit for like this reading vlog as well. But that is where I am with that today. I am 372 pages through. So I think this is the one I'm gonna listen to this morning just to get my little section finished. I'm so excited and getting so ready for the live show again, which is gonna be the first Saturday in April on my channel. So yeah, we will of course announce more towards the actual day, but I'm just super into um, discussing it and I can't wait. So. Um, I'm still reading Letters to a Young Poet, uh, yeah. <laughs> I just really needed it after the week that I had last week and I feel like it's just been doing me a world of good. I'm currently on letter three and what can I say? Are we surprised that I'm loving it? No. Did we think there's gonna be any other reaction to this book? No. Anyway, so I'm just really taking my time with this and I'm loving it, I'm loving it so much. Um, I'm also still really, really liking Legendborn. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be reading a little bit more of this today as well currently 56 pages through and I have to say so far the pacing is remarkably good like I'm really loving the pacing things are quite snappy they're happening quite fast nothing seems to be kind of dawdling on or overly dwelling on one aspect of the plot or a scene things feel quite natural it's it's flowing really smoothly I'm enjoying the writing I'm enjoying the characters and I'm just really interested to see what's actually going to happen because um Brie has just been attacked we're still like very early on in the book and she's still coming to find out who the legend born are what they are how much influence they have because people in the town and people at the university seem to be kind of the college sorry seem to be kind of in it or they know of it so she's still figuring that out but I'm really enjoying that yesterday I finished a couple books the first one was the lonesome bodybuilder by Yukiko Motoya. This was the collection of short stories. I wasn't super thrilled by this, honestly. I gave it three stars. There are definitely a few, mostly the beginning stories that I really, really enjoyed, but kind of as the book went on, I didn't super love them. So I just gave the collection three stars on a whole, but I am glad that I read it. And then I also finished um, Micromegas by Voltaire yesterday. This is actually kind of funny. I was listening to it on Audible because it was recommended to me on Audible, but it was like Audible's um, sleep one of their like sleep productions. So they get like the most relaxing narrator and the way that he was reading it was just very relaxing. And so like, 
I was just on the couch listening, trying to like actually concentrate and listen to this like little piece of philosophical satire by Voltaire. And I was just like, my brain was being melded and it, <laughs> it was just really funny. Um, it was really relaxing. So 10 out of 10 for um, Voltaire's content because the writing was actually super beautiful and I love this so much and 10 out of 10 for the relaxation. It was like ASMR. So I'll talk more about that in my wrap up, but it was just really interesting. So because I DNF'd Gods of Jade and Shadow, like I think so, yeah, let's DNF it. I just want to read books that I want to read this year. So uh, I think I'm going to start The God of Small Things today. I had this on audiobook as well and I might switch back and forth between trying to read it myself and listening to it because I'm just incredibly excited for this one. So yeah, this was a gift from a subscriber named Sonia. So thank you so much. And yeah, I know so many people were so excited when it was on my March TBR. You all say that it's amazing. So I think this is the one I want to go with first off of my TBR. So anyway, I'm also sitting down to plan out some videos, um, write a little bit in my writing journal, my to-do list, because I just have so many videos I want to do. And I think I'm slowly kind of trying to figure out how I'm going to balance like two YouTube channels. Obviously this is still going to be my main one, but I have decided to make solely an ASMR channel as well for that kind of content. So yeah, um, just very busy and going to see how it's all going to work out. So I'm going to write down a few thoughts in here because I think I've read three books so far this month now. Um, and then I'll listen to Pickwick and I'm just going to have a bit of a relaxing chill little bit because I was pretty productive this morning and got the review done. So cheers. All right. So I just woke up from a nap. Actually, I kind of like started awake from a nap and I just boiled some lemon tea. I'm trying to wake back up because it's about 525 and I did listen to a little bit of the God of Small Things this afternoon. I got eight pages in, but I'm already super, super impressed with the writing. Um, it's lovely. And if I didn't say what this is about, we are following two twins. We have Esta and Rahel, and they live in India. I think the year is 1969. And they're growing up, they're learning things, and I think a tragedy befalls them or something like that. Haven't gotten to that part yet at all, but I'm just, yeah, just so impressed by the writing. Like, even just this one line, she thought of what would happen if the rope snapped. She imagined him dropping like a dark star out of the sky that he had made lying broken on the hot church floor, dark blood spilling from his skull like a secret. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, guys. Um, so that is that one. And because you guys know that I just, I don't know why, what it is, I keep wanting to pick up literally every single book. I started Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco um, because I really wanted something a bit lighter. I've been craving another fantasy, especially after finishing Fortuna Sworn. I wanted like kind of more fantasy romance. I'm not sure how much romance is in Kingdom of the Wicked, especially because I think it's young adult. I'll double check on that, but I think, I think so. Anyway, I'm really enjoying it so far because, okay, let me just tell you, I love like really well done, cozy, like restaurant books. Not necessarily like contemporary books, but I love when there's a bit of fantasy or witchcraft or magic sprinkled into like restaurant settings. So for example, in Kingdom of the Wicked, we have two sisters yet again. I think they're actually twins again. Apparently I'm reading all of, all of the twin books. I don't know, is it Gemini season? What are the stars doing? I don't know. Um, but we have Amelia and Vittoria in here. We're set in Italy. We're in Palermo and we are following them as they're growing up. They are witches, I believe, or at least their nonna is a witch. And so, I don't know. It's just really fun though, because I just, I've missed Italian. I've missed hearing Italian. And obviously this book is written in English, but it has so much Italian food in it, Italian sayings. Obviously there's a little bit of Italian, just the language sprinkled in there because we are in Italia. So it's just so nice. And on top of that, like I said about the restaurant, it's just so cozy. Um, our sisters work at their family's restaurant and yeah, it's just really interesting. But basically in this one, I know it's about like the princes of hell or something like that, who come to earth looking for something that was stolen from the devil. And yeah, it's just gonna be a wild ride to my understanding. Um, that's what I was reading to kind of balance out this. And of course I'm still reading Pickwick and Legendborn. 
I finished my part of Pickwick for the day. Right now there's just a lot more like law and trials and stuff going on, which isn't my favorite thing to read about. And I know a lot of Bleak House. Is it Bleak House that's all about a trial, a very famous trial? I think it might be Bleak House, but I don't think we're reading Bleak House this year for the Dickens versus Tolstoy book club. Um, yeah, I'm just so excited. I know it's not really anytime soon, but I've literally been thinking about and wanting and waiting to read this book for a whole year. Reflexes. I'm just, oh, this is the book we're reading after the Pickwick Papers. We start April 1st reading this book if you guys would like to read along with us. And that is The Whopping War and Peace, Tolstoy's War and Peace. Oh my gosh, you guys, I can't, I know I still have weeks to wait until I start this. This is like my most anticipated read in the history of ever, in the history of the world, in the history of all time. And I can't believe we are now like, like three weeks away or something from reading this. I've waited a whole year. I think it's been almost exactly a year now since Carolyn gifted this to me. She gave me to this, she gave, she gave me to this. I am the gift. It is me. She gave this to me, is what I'm trying to say. She gave this to me almost a year ago, I believe late February 2020, because that's around the time we had been talking for a couple months, and of course we just spilled all of our love for Dickens and Tolstoy all over the other, and yeah, so I'm just... We are both so excited to be reading this. If you'd like to join us, if you are not part of the Dickens vs. Tolstoy book club, but if you want to join for this book, please feel welcome to do so. Please feel welcome to do anything you want and participate however you want with this book club. Feel free to dip in and out certain months and it really doesn't matter. You're always welcome to join no matter what the book is, no matter which author we're currently on for that month. And yeah, I'm just, I had to mention it here because I've just been like thinking about it every single day and like waiting to start this every single day. If you're wondering, we are both reading the Oxford World Classic Edition. This is the one translated by Louise and Almer Maud. So, yes, I believe those are the translators that had like Tolstoy's stamp of approval. So, anyway, I just, I had to mention it right now. I've been staring at this book forever on my shelf and I can't believe, I can't believe we're now like days away from starting this. I'm just so incredibly excited. That's going to have the longest vlog ever but i think right now i'm going to sit and try to work on editing a little bit on my snow country review that i filmed this morning i wanted to film an asmr video tonight i still might do it but i'm just so sleepy i know maybe like it'll take me a little bit to to wake up from my nap but at least with the snow country review i can just do the audio and just kind of sit there with my eyes closed and listen to it and edit it as i'm listening to it so yeah i also imagine i'm gonna listen more to the god of small things tonight so that is the plan. I definitely want to finish a couple books this week because I have a lot of them on the go. So I think I just want to take a few of them off so I can really concentrate on just one book at a time now because for a while I've been reading like six books at a time and that's fine. But yeah, anyway, that is the update for now. I went for a walk as well and that was nice and now I'm back. So I'm going to get back to work.
Good morning. It is now, um, I couldn't tell you. I don't even know what day it is. It's currently like 2.40 and I've been very productive. I got up and I filmed a video. It's a little bit of a different video than I've done. It is a, wait, I think I told you. Did I already tell you I'm doing a thrift cottage core kind of thrift haul? Anyway, I filmed that this morning. I'm very excited for it. But to talk about books for a little bit because this is what I, I like and dislike um, talking about books like immediately when I start them because with Kingdom of the Wicked, my thoughts are already like all different. Um, like yesterday, no, not yesterday, Tuesday, Monday, one day. It wasn't yesterday, but it was someday. I was telling you that I was really liking it. I was really liking the atmosphere, the writing. It was cool. Um, and basically what happened with Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco, Maniscalco, it just hit a wall. This book literally just ran straight first into a wall. I closed the door. Um, but yeah, it just ran right into a wall and I think it's going to be a two star. I wanted to DNF it so much, but I just thought since I DNF'd Gods of Jade and Shadow, I would give like the next book I read a bit of a bigger chance and a longer chance. So I'm listening to it at like 2.2x speed. So I'm going to be done it really quickly. But basically I have a lot of problems with this book. First of all, just some staple things. I don't know if I told you the synopsis. We're following this girl named Amelia and her twin Vittoria and they live in Italy. First things first, I have no idea what year it is or even what century it is. I really couldn't tell you. Um, I don't know if the author's like intentionally trying to make us confused and not know what time period it is, but when the book started, I thought we were very much like present day because Amelia's talking about how she's running her restaurant, how one day she wants to run her own restaurant and not just her family's. So I totally thought it was like present day Italy in Palermo, but it's not. <laughs> um, some other clues, like Amelia is always wearing long skirts. Um, so women always have to dress that way, I'm assuming. Like she's always talking about it. She, there's no technology really, I don't think. Um, I just, I honestly don't know what year it is. People are very superstitious. There's a lot of religion in this book because this story is about how Amelia's twin, Vittoria, is murdered. Her heart is literally ripped out. That's not a spoiler, it's in the uh, blurb. But then to try and solve her twin's murder, she summons kind of accidentally one of the seven princes of hell. Whoops. Um, and now she has to kind of deal with what bringing him into the world is like and how they're going to team up and solve the murder because another thing is she's a witch. She's a witch and she's trying to hide her identity from the community because there are witch hunters in this world who would very much do her and her family harm. So there's just a lot of kind of different elements going on. This book could have benefited so much from really simple editing of the length of the scenes because this book's pacing could have been really good with the kind of different scenes that were happening but for some reason Carrie Maniscalco decides to spend like so long so so long just on this one scene and every single scene is like that it's almost like she's filling a certain page quota for every new scene and they all have to be exactly interminably long and it's so frustrating because i feel like the scene could have been over 10 years ago but karen maniscalco just keeps going with it and i'm like this is giving me no new information this is boring me to death and it's just making me really fed up. On top of that, our protagonist, Amelia, is literally just like a wet cloth. I don't even know who she is. Her only personality is that she really likes to cook. That's it. I'm also just incredibly confused. Like, I'm just so confused. There's so many different little, like, little things going on, but none of them are properly explained. She doesn't take time to sit you down and tell you why this like magical thing is a thing or what prophecies are and just everything is kind of this big, mess and I don't think it's a good thing that I'm confused right now. I think I should be knowing what's going on, but I don't. <laughs> I just don't know what's happening. Um, so yeah, just super, super not impressed with this. The romance in this book, I was mainly reading this. It is young adult, by the way. I was mainly reading this because I wanted more of like a fantasy romance, but the prince that she summons from hell is Wrath. Um, that's the sin, like the prince guy is Wrath. That's his name as well. Um, it's about their romance too, but I'm 
almost halfway through the book i'm more than halfway through the book and there's been zero romance so very disappointed on that front as well so i think i know who the bad person is as well and if i'm right i like knew the first time they stepped on the screen so that'll also be disappointing but i'll keep you updated on that in case it surprises me but overall kingdom of the wicked yeah Kingdom of the Mediocre, more like, am I right? Anyway, um, The God of Small Things is phenomenal, so I'm going to be listening hopefully mostly to that today. I made the, com the compartment. I made the apartment a complete mess today um, when I was filming this morning, so I'm going to take time now, clean everything up. I'm probably going to listen to the Pickwick papers while I do so, get my 15 pages read for the day. How are you guys liking it, by the way? I think a lot of people aren't super enjoying it, and I totally understand that. Um, I'm still liking it, but like I said, there are a lot of slow parts that I'm not super enjoying, and there's definitely a lot of repetitive motifs and elements and scenes and events. Um, so yeah i'm just trying to keep in mind the essence essence the nature of like serial serializing books and stories and stuff like that but i'm still liking it i'm just wondering how you guys are liking it <laughs> because i think i don't know i'm gonna do my best to defend dickens but i think this is kind of a hard work to defend on his part especially um just because of how it's set up and what it's like but anyway that's my update on kingdom of the wicked and stuff like that so i'm gonna clean listen to pickwick and then i want to read a little bit today as well and i need to edit that video so <laughs> All right, so I just sat down, put all the books away, cleaned up a little bit, the books that I was like using in the video, but I thought maybe we could do like a mini P.O. box um, kind of opening in a haul. And I got some book mail this week and I went to my P.O. box yesterday and I'm just really, really excited. I'm not gonna show everything right now because I actually, sometimes when you guys give me books or certain things, it just gives me so many ideas. And so if I don't mention um, like a book or something in this video, it's probably because like I have, I have big plans for it but um the first thing i went yesterday and i found this someone gave me a franco pop franco pop i think i do this every i think i do this so much like i try to say the two words that i want to say as one word but that's not how language works i meant to say a frankenstein funko pop instead it's a franco pop anyway look at him he is just adorable he is holding a little flower he is so cute. Um, he's definitely gonna go on my bookshelf. I think I'm gonna open him up and put him on my bookshelf because I really, really want to. So thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. He is adorable. I love how he's holding a little flower. That is so, so cute. Um, and he, he, his little like nails are even painted. I know it's not really supposed to be like probably nail polish, but it just looks so cute. So thank you so much. And then we have some book mail. So I have a couple books here. These are from Olga. Thank you so much. And Victor. Thank you so much. And I also have one book that I, um, I found in, in a library thing. So I'm going to show you that too, because why not? But Olga sent me the girl who dragged the moon. Oh, I can't even say this title in a normal voice anymore because I'm just too excited. I feel like I'm matching the cover today and I just, I am just so happy to have this. I opened this and I like screamed. If you guys have not heard me speak about The Girl Who Drank the Moon recently, you should definitely check it out. This is my first five star of the year. I think my only five star so far and it's just so incredible. Um, this is by Kelly Barnhill and this is about... Uh, a girl named Luna and a witch named Zan and an ancient swamp monster named Glurk and a little tiny dragon. And I just, oh, this book made me cry. I just loved it so much. It's about magic and growing up and stories and the truth and hiding the truth. And it's just so good. I cannot wait to read this with my own eyes because wow, 
one of my favorite middle grades like of all time now if not like my favorite middle grade so thank you so much Olga and then I also received the joy of walking selected writings edited by Susan Cripps so this is a collection of writing from many many famous and often classical authors about walking and what walking means to them what it's like to find yourself on walk i imagine there's a lot about nature and just the exercise in general and how good it is so um we have William Wordsworth, Walt Whitman, Charles Dickens, Ian e. Forster, Emily Bronte, Elizabeth Gaskell, and just so, so many more. This is an absolutely beautiful little book. I adore this. I believe Carolyn, um, I think she has this as well because I think I'm just seeing her talk about it. So I'm just really, really happy to have this one. Thank you so much. We have Thomas Hardy, uh, Wilkie Collins, Jane Austen, Gates, John Clare, uh, George Eliot, just so many different people. So I'm very much looking forward to reading this. I think this would be a lovely companion to read. Um, you know, maybe something from it once a day because yeah, I just, I love walking so much as well. And this cover is just gorgeous so that is that guy and then the one that i found in the little community library box is called a small town in germany and this is by john le carré um i believe he's a british author uh is he still alive he might be still alive i don't know um i hadn't really heard too much about john le carré but i think he's basically kind of like a spy writer you know all about espionage and war and just spy things which sounds really really interesting so uh a little a small town in germany is set in west germany in the 1960s and it's a simmering cauldron of radical protests amid the turmoil leo harding a second secretary in the british embassy has gone missing along with more than 40 confidential embassy files alan turner of the foreign office must travel to bonn to recover them so um this is a novel, I think, about the Cold War and just events that go on during the Cold War. I believe John the Cafe was like involved in a lot of this stuff, like in real life. I'm not too sure like what his job was. Yeah, so he served briefly in British intelligence during the Cold War. So, and then after that, he became an author because he has so many books like this. So this one was just really, really nice. I love how floppy the uh, Penguin Modern Classics books are. I just... Ooh, I really, really like them. So that is that guy. And I'm very much excited to read this. I love this cover as well. All right, so those are some books. Thank you guys so much if you sent me anything. I also wanna say a huge thank you to Stacy and John. You guys sent me some really lovely letters and I'm just so appreciative. I think we should do this more. Maybe we should do this more like a PO box kind of opening because I really like just seeing. Oh, speaking of that, I don't know if you can see, I've been putting more of your guys' artwork on the walls and I just absolutely love it. There's one here. Actually, let's just go see because it looks so cute. I love it. Yeah, so this is what it's looking like right now. Last week, I was a little bit busy finding some frames. My grandma was getting rid of a bunch of them, so I snatched some up and yeah, because frames are really expensive. <laughs> but um, thankfully, I got some secondhand from her and I just absolutely love how they turned out. Unfortunately, I still have not been able to find one, a frame for this piece by Abigail Larson. Um, because it looks a little bit silly without a frame and this one just looks beautiful So I'm still on the lookout for a big one, but let's just go through it. I love oh my goodness I love this one. I'll leave um, the places that I got these down below if if I know so this one is from foggy craft Thank you so much again. I just really really love this piece. Oh my goodness. This is another one I think I might find a little little frame from this. This is from Jerry. So thank you so much and this is just a quote that I put from Rilke's Book of Hours. You guys know I've had that for a decently long time. If you wanna read it, I just adore it. Um, this one Lucy gave me almost a year ago now. This is a scene from Prometheus Unbound. I think I talk about this a lot as well, but Lucy drew that for me from Crescent Pages. I love it. This one I tore out of a recipe book I had because I just thought it looked really good. Um, this is the Mary Shelley piece from Abigail Larson. This one is from Camille. Thank you so, so much. I love this one. It's very dark academia and I just think it looks so nice in here. And then this one is from Michael. Look at this. Wow. This might be my favorite frame as well. I just absolutely love it. And then when my little copper lights are on, oh my goodness, it just looks, it just looks so good. So yeah. And then we have that one as well. So um, thankfully I do still have a couple more frames because there are some other things I'd like to put, but for right now, that's how it's looking. And of course, Seneca, Seneca is here, <laughs> but yeah. 
What did I say? It's now eight o'clock on the same day and I got to the part in the kingdom of the wicked and it's who I thought it was. It's exactly who I thought it was. Oh my gosh. This book has just been disappointing. I have 30 minutes left on it. I've been listening to it all day while I've been doing chores and working and editing even. Um, and yeah, just not good. Just really, really not good. Not surprised at all. Like I literally guessed. I figured it out like the moment the book started. I just woke up a little bit ago. It is 10.20. I've had a pretty lazy morning, which is nice because I've been waking up earlier the past week and stuff. I was trying to film a little update last night when I finished Kingdom of the Wicked, but then I realized that I filmed the whole um, update and I never hit record, so. I just recorded so long and it wasn't even recording. Anyway, I finished that last night. Super disappointing, super predictable. I gave it two stars. I'll say more about it, of course, in my wrap up, but just so let down, so, so let down. Today is another really breezy, warm day and it's making me really sleepy, but I just sat down and read a little bit of Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I am that much into it, but I am the part where I am now, I just got to like part two, which is almost 90 pages through. Brie has just started to infiltrate Legendborn and try and take part. So there's like this tournament that's going to take place, kind of like a tournament in King Arthur's Day where different pages compete for who's going to be let in to Legendborn, the group. So um, the student who was kind of assigned to her as her peer mentor, Nick, she actually finds out that he is part of Legendborn as well. So he's kind of her ticket in. She's very much just pushing in, wanting to find the answers to what happened um, from the stuff she's been seeing and also on the night her mother died because there's been some questionable things that have been brought up and certain memories that may or may not have been like blocked out from that night. So she is entering this competition and yeah. It's really good so far, honestly. I'm really enjoying it. The God of Small Things is the book I'm gonna be focusing on finishing next, I think, because this is just absolutely incredible so far. I'm only 40 pages through, but it's just so good. So this is the one that I'm gonna be probably finishing up next, hopefully. But yeah, I'm gonna go get dressed and probably make some breakfast. <laughs>
so I've just been doing my laundry this morning. Um, I've been going through my closet again and getting rid of some stuff, but I'm also slowly just transitioning things up to, you know, like summer and spring because I went through my shorts and I'm gonna be getting these out because they've been in like, you know, boxes for all of Canada's very snowy winter this year. I've been very pleased with the winter, honestly. And then these are just some pajama shirts and apparently I only like star pajama bottoms i don't know what that's about but i recently picked up this skirt when i went thrifting i'll leave the vlog up there but i got this skirt because i don't know it drew me in like a moth but now i have it and i'm like where am i ever actually gonna wear this it's originally from forever 21 but um this is very much like a new year's skirt to me so it's a little bit later i've had a pretty productive morning i just set a video to upload because i have to send it out for approval is approval approval um it'll be out on monday i hope but i just got my bag and i put a little bit of layers on and i'm gonna go for a walk because i think it's even warmer than yesterday which is so crazy but some of you guys have been asking where i'm like parts of my end pieces of my clothing are from so this vest is thrifted this shirt is from thread up which is an online thrift store um this cardigan is from walmart i got it in high school um my watch is from nord green and then this skirt is from blue notes but um there's a huge bleach stain right on my butt when i bleached my hair in my first year of uni so i just try to wear stuff that hides that but that's fine all right let's go So it is now almost seven o'clock, so it's been a little bit since I talked to you. Um, I'm slowly winding down for the evening. I actually just put some cookies in the oven. They are half chocolate chip and half peanut butter because I didn't have enough chocolate chips or enough peanut butter to make a full batch of one or the other, so I decided to combine those two together. So those are in the oven. I made some tea. And I don't really have that much planned for the night. I think I'm gonna sit down and try and draw a little bit, just see how that goes. I read Legendborn for the day, I read Pickwick for the day, and I'm still absolutely loving The God of Small Things. I got a little bit further way through this and I just, yeah, cannot recommend it enough already. The writing is just incredible. Like, Arendati Roy like makes language her own and it's just so incredible. Like I feel like a lot of authors are kind of shackled to language and just um, essentially get used by language. And you can tell a lot of times when people just use so many cliched sentences, so many like popularly used and contrived and recycled tropes in their language. But um, this author, she just takes it to like a whole new level, invents things, and it's just so creative. Like to me, this is what you should always be doing with language, making it your own, changing it, and she just like walks through it like it's water and it's incredible. Um, maybe I can share like a few favorite quotes right now. Yeah, so this one's a really nice one. Heaven opened and the water hammered down, reviving the reluctant old well, green mossing the pigless pigsty, carpet bombing still tea-colored puddles the way memory bombs still tea-colored minds. The grass looked wet green and pleased. Happy earthworms frolicked purple in the slush. Green nettles nodded, trees bent. Yeah, so this is just so good. So I'm gonna go take my cookies out and I'm gonna relax for the evening because I got all my work done. I sent in my video and I'm really excited for you guys to see it tomorrow. Keep your eyes open tomorrow. Um, it's a bit of a different one. It doesn't really involve books, which I'm really excited to start kind of branching out more. But um, yeah, that's about it. Sunday and I just wanted to come in here and close off the vlog. <laughs> I recently put my little sewn um, jellyfish that one of my best friends made me right here. I just, I love him so much. He looks 
perfect right there. But um, I did get some more book mail, surprisingly. I was not expecting this. Thank you guys so much. Um, one of this, one of this, what am I saying? What is grammar? One of these came in my PO box. Um, and that one is 84 Charing Cross Road. No, it's gotta be Trying Cross, right? British friends, is it Charing or Charing? It can't be caring. <laughs> anyway, I think it's 84 Charing Cross Road, right? Um, this is by Helene Hanf, and this is a 20 year correspondence between an American writer and a British bookseller. I have heard of this. I actually think I heard of this first from Noelle, from Noelle Gallagher. You guys, of course, probably all know her. She is wonderful. Um, I think I heard her discuss this first a while ago, so I'm really excited to read this. This is, like it suggests, a whole bunch of letters. And it just seems so sweet and wholesome and just seems like a really nice story to follow. So that is that one. And then this one came. Um, it's Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto. Thank you so, so much. This is from a wonderful subscriber named Myra. Am I saying your name right? I really, really hope so. Please yell at me if I'm not. But I'm so excited to read this one. Um, you guys all recommended me Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto to basically start with because I did read NP. Um in february and didn't love it that much but yeah i'm very much looking forward to reading these two so thank you guys so so much and yeah i'm just about to get into a call with lucy which will be really really nice to catch up with her and talk to her and it'll just be like a very kind of refreshing end to my week and a really nice i think glide and start into monday of next week so mr jelly and i are going to wish you a very fond farewell thank you so much for watching i hope you're having a wonderful week whatever day this is uploaded on i'm not too sure yet but regardless thank you guys so so much for watching ciao